beskrajno nebo i milijarde milijardi zvezda fasciniraju nas od praskozorja čovečanstva. Međutim, o mozgu, za nas jednako značajnom univerzumu, ne znamo dovoljno. A petina ljudi na planeti boluje od bolesti povezanih sa nervnim sistemom, za koje još uvek nema leka. Ljudski mozak je mnogo komplikovaniji od bilo kog računara koji smo u stanju da zamislimo. Stotine milijardi nervnih ćelija povezane su međusobno posebnim vezama, sinapsama, kojih je mnogo više nego što ima zvezda u čitavom univerzumu. O funkcionisanju mozga detaljno se uči tek na fakultetima. Na nižim nivojima obrazovanja samo se dotakne ova oblast. Čini se nedovoljno da izazove interesovanje većeg broja učenika. Osim toga, svuda u svetu istraživačka oprema je složena, glomazna, veoma skupa i nedostupna većini obrazovnih institucija. To je razlog što ne znamo dovoljno o ovom fascinantnom i veoma kompleksnom organu. Već sedam godina Greg Gage, inženjer sa doktoratom iz neuronauke, među lajcima svih doba promoviše istraživački rad u ovoj uzbudljivoj oblasti. Za sebe kaže da je DIY, do it yourself neuronaučnik i suglasni kompanije za proizvodnju istraživačke opreme za svakodnevno korišćenje u školskim laboratorijama Backyard Brains. Najradije širi znanje među školarcima, jer smatra da je nauka najbolji alat za razvijanje kreativnosti i kritičkog mišljenja. Predavač i organizacije TED i istraživač Nacionalnog instituta za zdravlje u Sjedinjenim američkim državama. I consider myself what's called a DIY neuroscientist, kind of do it yourself. And so uh, we try to use uh, equipment that's, that's not very expensive, uh, but it does the same things that graduate level research tools uh, do. And so uh, we try to record from the, from the brains of, of insects or of humans uh, or even of plants. And why I'm here today is uh, I'm uh, working on uh, some new experiments and I want to show them uh, to as many people as possible because we're about to uh, launch some new, uh, some new experiments and so it's good to actually test them to make sure that they work before we actually release them to the wild. Dragara, we are going to record from your brain today, uh, and, but we're going to do that not by drilling the holes in your head, which I'd love to do, but uh, I don't think we have enough time in the show to <laughs> recover you. So we're going to do a shortcut instead, a biohack, if you will. Uh, I'm going to record by using a little bit of uh, salt water on the bottom of these stickers here. I'm going to place them onto your arms inside of your brain. So we have these, these large brains in our, in our heads and we have a very small strip of brain that is called the motor cortex. Uh, and that, that controls your arm functions and, and your legs and your, your talking, anything motor output. And so what we can do is we can record not by drilling into your head, uh, that's one way you can do that, or the other way is to allow the, the neurons to pass down to your spinal cord, out to your muscles, and pick up the activity there. It's just coming from your, your brain through your muscles to pass through these electrodes up to the metal, and we're going to be able to capture that electricity and amplify it so that we can hear it and see it, okay? So I have some wires here, and I'm going to place them onto your, your arm, like so, a little clips. When I'm moving my arm like this, I've got a neuron inside my, my head that's firing act potentials that synapse onto my spinal cord out to here, and I can record those messages as I move my arms. I'm going to plug them into our invention here that's going to be able to amplify your brain activity. First thing we're going to do is I'll plug in a speaker and we're going to be able to listen to what the activity sounds like inside your brain. So when you're ready, I want you to squeeze your hand. Yeah. So you hear that noise? I'll turn it up a little bit more. Do it again. Pump it a few times. Yeah. So that sounds like an electrical storm. Almost. And that's exactly what was happening. So you have electricity that's flowing from your motor cortex, synapsing on your spinal cord, coming out to your arm. And when you squeeze your hand, you're hearing an increase in that electricity right there. So that's kind of cool. But, you know, we are scientists here uh, at the university. We're fancy, right? So we want to be able to verify that's true. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to use a, an oscilloscope. So now, as you squeeze your hand, 
Yeah, so that's it. So that's, this is, these are the neurons that are firing inside of your, your sorry, and relax it, and then do it again. So that's the electrical activity that's happening inside of your muscle that's coming from the spinal cord inside your, uh, the neuron in your spinal cord that's coming from the neuron inside your brain. Mm -hmm. It's cool. So it's a, it's a two-step process, but we get there. But the cool thing is now, so, so when you squeeze your hand, you can control this signal, right? And so you are, you are, in effect, controlling this computer because your brain is setting the command when you want to to do things. And so we're also sort of turning on some lights here. So as you squeeze your hand, you're also controlling a brain-machine interface. So you control when those lights come on with your brain. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. And you're doing that because of the signal that we're able to pick up. So we can go one step further now. And we can use this invention. So I want you to hold this in your other hand. I'm going to plug this into this guy. And with your brain, you're going to now be able to control this arm as well. So I'm going to plug this in like so. And so when you squeeze your hand here, so this is a brain machine interface. So your muscle is sending a command that we're able to pick up and send into. So you have, you're basically copying the motion from one hand into the other. Mm -hmm using robotics. So what you can do is uh, what's called brain machine interfacing. So like um, one thing, if you have a spinal cord injury and you've lost the movement of your, of your muscles, let's say, uh, but you have other muscles that do move in the neck, so you can record from them and cause actuators to turn out like robotic arms or, uh, or wheelchairs, uh, or even using a stimulation of muscles that are still there. So you can actually cause your muscles to move using electrical stimulation, so we'll take a look at that as well. Kako vam se dopala ideja da nauka i naučni principi nađu publiku među zainteresovanima svih životnih doba i da nauka ne pripada samo visoko specializovanim laboratorijama sa skupom opremom, već da se osnovni principi naučno-istraživačkog rada mogu savladati čak i kod kuće. Učenici i studenti bivaju zainteresovani i za gradivo kada učestvuju u samom procesu izvođenja nastave i, uz neznatnu intervenciju predavača, dolaze do rešenja problema koji se obrađuje. Korišćenje jednostavnih i jeftinih uređaja za eksperimentalni rad uz savremene tehnološke alate poput interaktivnih tabli, platformi za učenje i softvera za vraćenje obuke studenata, omogućava da se abstraktno gradivo bolje i lakše razume. Ovakve metode su u svetu uvedene u nastavu na svim nivoima školovanja. Princip savremenog obrazovanja je u tome da se podstakne kreativnost studenta, da oni radeći eksperimente dolaze na različite ideje, da imaju fokus u tim svojim idejama i da izvodeći eksperimente u stvari razvijaju svoju kreativnost. Moram da kažem da je naša fakultetu, konkretno na predmetu fiziologija, bio eksperimentalni rad do 2000. godine i mi smo te eksperimente iz neurofiziologije radili na životinskim modelima. Nastava iz predmeta opšta i oralna fiziologija na Stomatološkom fakultetu Univerziteta u Beogradu održava se uz upotrebu savremenih tehnologija. U protekloj deceniji studenti su se upoznavali sa neurofiziološkim fenomenima gledajući nastavni film i koristeći kompjuterske animacije. Međutim, sa ovim načinom doktora Gejđe eksperimentom i opremom koju koristi u ovim eksperimentima, mi ćemo se ponovo vratiti na taj mnogo kreativniji način praktične nastave iz neurofiziologije. Nivo koji on donosi ovde i koji nam je omogućio da prisustujemo je stvarno, da kažemo, vrhunski svetski nivo. I stvarno imali smo zadovoljstvo da ga ugostimo kod nas na fakultetu stomatološkom i gde su studenti i to se, da kažemo, nižih godina mogli da iskuse, da kažemo, taj nivo predavanja i prezentacije, da kažemo, vrhunske i moderne nauke.
So now what we're gonna do is we're looking at, at plants. And plants actually, like animals, have behaviors. Uh, and so uh, if I touch the leaves of, these, of this plant right here, you're gonna see a couple of interesting behaviors. So if I touch it right there, you see how the, the leaves turn up? So this is interesting. How is that possible? This is a fast moving plant that, that responds to, uh, to touch. So if I go in here and I put an electrode, let's see. If I place an electrode around the stem, we may be able to peer inside the plant and understand how it works. And so I'm now gonna tap this leaf here and we're gonna see uh, what's happening with a voltage on the inside, okay? I'm gonna tap the leaf. And so you see right here an electrical activity that's happening at a very quick time scale. On the time scale, it's, it's a bit longer than in, in, in mammals, but it's an electrical current. So in the, and the, what happens is that when you move it, the electrical current reaches out and then causes the, the uh, water to leave cells and allows the plant to move. Very similar to the human brain uh, that this does that. So now we're gonna take a look at the Venus flytrap. We've got Venus, the Venus flytrap has tiny hairs on the inside and those hairs are detecting for when a fly moves against it, it was gonna open, um, and it's gonna cause a spike. And we're gonna watch that right now, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna actually close. So, so I want you to try, to, you touch to, try to touch just touch one of those hairs, if you can see in there. There we go. There we go, all right, all right perfect, excellent. All right, so don't, all right, touch, so don't touch it again, don't touch it again. So you notice now that we get this, this is called an ax potential or a spike. It's the same thing that we saw that was in, in the muscles earlier. It's the same thing we see in your heart when you move your heart. And it's the same thing that's happening in plants, but what's happening here is that it's actually not closing. It's actually starting a, a countdown, it starts counting from up to 20. And if it doesn't get another spike like this in 20 seconds, then it will remain open. If it gets two spikes within 20 seconds, it closes. So it's actually doing thinking. It's actually, you know, figuring out if there's a, really a fly inside of it because it takes so much energy to open that trap back up. And it only needs to eat two or three flies a year to survive. Uh, and if you open up too many times, it dies. And so it wants to make pretty damn sure that there's a fly inside of it before it, so we can eat it. So if we, so now if we can, maybe we can get turn it this way just ever so slow. From the Venus flytrap into the mimosa, such that when you touch the Venus flytrap hair, it's gonna send the ax potential into the, into the mimosa, and the mimosa will do its behavior, which is kind of turning down of the leaves. We're going to st stimulate the Venus flytrap, cause an ax potential on the screen. We're gonna send that ax potential into the mimosa and produce the behavior that mimosas produce, okay? So when you're ready, I want you to touch the leaf of the flytrap. We're gonna send it through the plant-to-plant -plant interface into our, our another species of plant. Yes! <laughs> uh, the importance of why we're doing what we're doing is that uh, there's like 20% of the world have a neurological disorder uh, and not many people know how the brain works. And we don't teach uh, neuros neuroscience at all in, in you know, even in, in college level uh, schools because it's kind of considered a, a specialty field that once you've decided to become a neuroscientist, uh, you will get trained on the tools and, and how the brain works. But since it has such a global importance, I mean, it's, it's a huge cost burden for society uh, of, all the, of all neurological afflictions and we don't have any cures. We have zero cures for these diseases. And I think it's important that we start training uh, students early on uh, about the brain and let them know that there is a career path to become a neuroscientist, right? Because uh, with all these burdens that are on society, I think it's important that we at least give them the option. So what we try to do with the tools that I'll show you today is, is make the, the, at least the cost level down to the point where people can afford to do that. And then make the instruction such that anyone who has the, 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 the will to want to learn uh, can start to do uh, kind of graduate level research in neuroscience. So now the question is, can we take this signal and send it into somebody else such that they will receive your brain command in their arms? I'm gonna place them on Maria. And so right in your arm, so we're recording the electromyogram from here. So as you move your, if your brain sends a command to move your hand, and then feed it into her arm, and then we should be able to have your brain control both your arm and her arm out at the same time. And you have lost your free will forever. So again, uh, give me a high five, and I'm gonna find the ulnar nerve. So this is the nerve that comes around here, and sort of innervates right here and here. 
and then I'm gonna grab and this, okay. So now I'm gonna hook you up with wires. No, you, Maria. Is that right? Okay. And then I'm gonna hook you two together so you guys will be one cybernetic organism forever and ever while, <laughs> while at least during this experiment. All right. Yeah, so your brain is sending this command to your arm and we're also sending it to her arm such that when you squeeze your hand, now squeeze it really hard. Okay, I'm gonna turn up just a little bit more. Okay, so, <laughs> so kind of roll it like, all right, there you go, see. All right, so now, so now your brain's sending it over here. So now if you relaxed your hand um, and you relaxed your hand, what would happen if I took my hand and moved your hand? Would it also move uh, her hand? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we relax, keep it long. So I move it. Oh, you gotta relax, keep it completely still like it's gonna fall off the ground. So I can see on this, the screen there's no electromyogram. It's only when you control it, so do you squeeze it, that we actually get the signal. So it has to be your brain controlling it. I can't take my free will away from you and then you take it away from her, all right? And the other question we can ask now is, does your hand need to move, right? So what would happen if I resisted your hand from moving and you still tried to push against my hand? Would her hand move? I think so. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, so. So, you, so that's a good question. I mean, does your muscle actually have to move to concur? So it has to come from your brain. And even if you, could, if you withheld the muscle, you, your brain is still sending the signal. We're picking up that signal and we're transferring it to Marianne. Okay. Uh, it's an exciting time to be a neuroscientist right now. There's a lot of new inventions that are just coming online. Uh, things that uh, using optogenetic tools, so using uh, genetic tools and light to be able to turn on a specific neurons inside the brain. So these are exciting a lot of people because now for the first time ever, we can actually possibly in the future be able to fix some of these diseases that have been long like uh, afflicting uh, humankind. So uh, that's exciting. All these new techniques on, and how to image the brain is, is coming online now. So it's, a, it's an exciting, exciting time to be a neuroscientist. Upoznati Robo Rouča. Videti kako hip-hop muzika deluje na nervni sistem lignje. Prikaz nervnog impulsa biljke mesoždarke. Kako mozak jedne osobe može da preuzme kontrolu nad pokretima druge. Sve navedeno izaziva veliko interesovanje publike. Misija doktora Grega Gejđa i tima okupljenog oko kompanije Backyard Brain jeste da pokažu koliko je nauka neodoljiva i da utiču da se sve nauke u školama uče pomoću pravih eksperimenata. Njihovo iskustvo je pokazalo da nakon upoznavanja sa neuronaukom za sve, učenici i studenti lakše prihvataju naučni metod, bolje savladavaju gradivo i da postaju mnogo zainteresovaniji za istraživački rad, naročito u ovoj oblasti. To će, nadamo se, u bližoj budućnosti doprineti ranijem otkrivanju i izlačenju neurodegenerativnih bolesti i poremećaja povezanih sa nervnim sistemom.